Nigeria and Nigerians have a common enemy. Politically speaking, only two tribes exist, the rich and the poor. And there are only two religious extremes, the wealth extreme and the poverty extreme. The elites know this very well, but the masses don't. Nigeria's political elites may be incompetent about governance, but they are definitely competent about incompetence and politicking. Through the instrumentality of systematic indoctrination and divisive religious and tribal sentiments, they have strategically maintained their grip on power despite their crass incompetence, impunity, and corruption. The average northern Muslim grows up believing he was born to rule, and that the only enemy he must overcome is the infidel, and that is the southern Christian. The average Yoruba man grows up believing that he has to get rid of Omo Ibo, who is occupying his land and monopolizing the businesses therein. Why the average Igbo man like me grows up believing that the Hausa man doesn't want his existence and would easily partner with the Yoruba man to achieve that. However, from my experiences, some of the most supportive people around me are from the North and West. Now, when they teach us history, they teach us conveniently doctored and regional historical perspectives. The Igbos are taught that the Biafran genocide happened because Igbos simply demanded their own nation as a way of forestalling the marginalization and massacres of Igbos in the north. The Hausa Fulanese are taught that the war happened because the Igbo caucus connived and executed the massacre of northern elites. And the Yorubas are taught that the Igbo man will never trust or love him because of the betrayal role Awolowo supposedly played in the failure of the Biafran mood. move. Now, instead of admitting that the war was avoidable and was a result of the egotism and parochial interests of our rulers, they forced the masses into believing that tribal differences necessitated this war, which is wrong. What then is the consequence? Why the rulers reveal the masses are divided by parochial regional interests? And that jeopardizes our sense of objectivity, merit, and nationhood during national elections. The northerner would rather vote the, northern, the worst northerner than vote an easterner. The westerner would prefer to pander to the north when he can't be in power than risk an easterner. And the easterner prefers to leave the union than vote the northern or western option. And the southerners would often pander to the east. Nevertheless, there is still hope for Nigeria. But it will start materializing when the masses realize that we have a common enemy, and that is our rulers. We also need to realize that the ruling class is strengthened by our unity and would do anything to jeopardize it. This was clearly demonstrated in the Arabic crackdown of the NSAS protests. And very importantly, we need to realize that our political elites are united in their oppression and suppression of the masses, and that PDP and APC are the same party. The ruling is, however, different. <laughs> you know, nothing else can be truth about the, who our enemy is. We already know who our enemy is, but uh, what actually struck me is you know, how they are threatened by our unity. And I keep saying it, that the NSAS was the very first time since my own existence that I could see everybody, despite religion, where you are from, origin, background, qualification, whatever, everybody came together for the first time, and it never mattered where you are from. It never mattered your tribe. It never mattered your religion. Things were working. It became like a nation of its own. Oh, yeah, the days it, it just sprung up in different People parts were, of the country. There, there was food. Nobody complained of hunger. There were medical uh, medication, health care. There were legal services over yes. three of them. So within a free, a free period, it was a nation of its own. So I really, really believe that. I mean, these guys are threatened by an, our unity. And the best way to really achieve their aim is to ensure that these guys are still apart. Because provided mm. they come together, yeah. it's a very big change. problem. It, it reminds me of, of an advocacy we had a few weeks ago where we talked about uh, um, everybody being a victim. Whether you're Igbo, you're Uba, you're a teacher, you're a police, yeah. you're a citizen, you're jobless, you have a job, you're a civil servant, we're all victims. Yeah. Because whatever we are going through was dictated by a group of people who have decided to just make us feel you are better than this person. Yeah. And until, like rightly said, until we come to that realization, and that is where I, I, it baffles me, that even in the era, in the 80s and the 70s, where there was no internet, where people didn't have access to information, 
they tend to understand things better than we are now, mm -hmm. than we do now. Now we have access to information. You Go can to Google. Yes. You, I've, I've downloaded Emotions so many and documents from uh, yes, roads, the from, from online that we have. about the Igbo Biafra, the civil war. It's a yeah. Nigeria war. And I've seen so many angles. I mean, you download, you see what is happening in the north. And for example, when people say the north is, is destroying Nigeria, I tell them that, listen, if any sensible president comes into power today and wants Nigeria to be good, he has to focus on investing in the North. Yes. Because they don't yes. have anything. Yes. Yes. Look at all the people. kidnappings that is happening. Education, because a lot of the schools are in the outskirts. The schools don't have walls. You see model colleges and I'm like, this one is a model college in the yeah. North. And we accuse the North. And they had the number. Of ripping us out. You know, I always say that one thing in Nigeria is that the politicians weaponize poverty and illiteracy. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And don't educate them yeah. so that you can move them in the direction they want. They, they mix Put religion with... there and divide them exactly. apart. Mm -hmm. Put um, ethnicity and, and throw them separate, apart. Yeah. But when you come to the offices, yeah, when you go to the markets, when yeah. you go to the grassroots, we're all together in yeah. this. Oh, Even sure, Chola sure. knows that when he gets <laughs> to wherever he is. There is nothing. I want you a Nigerian bros, bro, we're together. So, so but when you come home, you find this you line find, that exactly. are literally exactly. not supposed to Tell be Tell us your experience. What do you think? Let's hear from you. What your do you view. think about I think, I think, you know, it's funny because uh, even though I'm a southerner, my best friends are from all, all parts of the country. Absolutely. The East, the North. And it's always so funny for me when we are having these, these discussions because, um, you know, they, they actually mean nothing. When you think about it really in the sense of the word, when somebody does a transaction with you, you don't care, you know, whether they're from the north or from the east. If you're going to sell a property to somebody for hundreds of millions of naira, you wouldn't be like, oh, I'm not selling to this person because it's from this part of the world. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is the this is the thing that, that I find a bit, you know, frustrating about Nigeria, is that we conveniently find these escape routes yeah. when we, things are not working out for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when things are working out great for us, our best friends are, we're all... Anyway. What's that word? The tribalized Nigerian. You know? I just wish that we would, we, we would go beyond just saying things. It's the same thing we said about religion. We go beyond just yeah. saying things and start to do I more start to do them. and yeah. show people like proper, you know, the way things should be properly done. Mm. Yeah, let, I, let me keep this thing before you wrap up. Right, that it, it's so bad that you see right now, in terms of insecurity. We are saying, you know, all these people are coming from Niger, Niger, Niger. But you know, as of today, a lot of people still take the local security guards, me guards, from Niger. Thank yeah. you, my that, that, that is how you know that in our yeah. mind, we don't really care where you come from. Yeah. We just want solutions. Yeah. Because I, where I live, mm. uh, well, we happen to own the property. We are Yorubas. Mm. We have a tenant, two young ladies, beautiful, hardworking girls, hardworking mm. girls. They are, the, they are in our BQ. They are evils. And our security man that lives in, beside the BQ, he's an awesome man. No, and no, we, know know, we wake up in the morning, we're leaving the house, and know. everybody's just in. Uh, Baba Zachary, have a good day. Ah, who's our maker? Take care. Bye. There's nothing like, uh, you I think, know. I think this is a political machination. <laughs> No, our politicians may not understand governance, but they know politics. They know, politics. Yes. They know yes. as long as we are remain divided along political, religious, and tribal lines, they can have their way. Yeah. For instance, if an incompetent northerner is coming to power, the average northerner who is not exposed, we vote him regardless of how incompetent he is, as long as he's a northern mm. Muslim. Mm. So, so they continue to sponsor yeah. those sentiments. Well, yes, because those sentiments benefit them and elongate their stay in power. Mm. So I just think, wish there is a way that the poor masses, that the masses we can realize that, see, that we are one. We are one. You know, no, this we advocacy, this, this program together. is one of the ways to educate them. Mm. But what is even more scary to me is that rather than watch this, a lot of the people that are concerned, that are badly hit, will go watch other entertainment programs. Twerking. Because they don't understand, <laughs> that's it. They don't understand the value. You, I mean, you hear people say, yeah, election don't concern you. And I'm yeah. like, how? How, how can uh, you say election? Uh, that determines I mean, your future. Yeah, before, you, before you wrap up, is that we also need to start understanding that we are different and not better. And I'm saying that because of from mm. what he said. Yeah. We need to start really realizing that we are different from each other. Yes. If I was born in the North, and I have that environmental influence from the north, I will not behave anything less like, than mm, what they are doing. Mm, yeah. So the fact that you are born in a different place completely make you different. And you, so you shouldn't despise the other person. They grew yeah. up as a result of what, you know, their upbringing, mm -hmm. their culture, their, the culture mm -hmm. and all those things. 
Uh, we need to really start understanding that because if because you guys understand that you are different, it yeah, makes you to appreciate yeah. your similarities, mm -hmm. yeah. diversities, and uniqueness. Rather than drive yeah. us apart, it yeah. should bring us together. Yeah. Well, time is never our friend on this program. Never. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the advocate NG. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.